Welcome to T3G, my name is Full Throttle, and this... Cerebro. That's right. And this is our third time doing this. First, Seriously. Third time for him, at least. Second time for me. Yeah. And I was actually behind the camera on the first time. Listen, we're just having whole sorts of problems with cameras and tangents <laughs> and tangents and cameras, and it's just getting ridiculous. Oh, yeah. Um... So I'm gonna I'm gonna go and start it out. Because right, right. I'm not gonna let him start it out. Right. I haven't been on camera in a while. Fair enough. Alright. Uh, today we're talking about uh, storage, specifically, you know, how to back up your things uh, to the proper storage, you know, what to use, what's the best way what's the best thing to use, and kinda go from there. So I'll let you start off and All right. we'll, I'll kinda play off of you. So we uh, we have a few options as far as backup. Now the most important thing I want to stress now, and I want to stress it many times during this conversation, back up your data. Please back up your data for your sake and everyone else's sake involved in the process of you getting your computer fixed, back up your data. This is now, this is the tangent we've had actually a few, even last, last night trying yeah. to record this. Um, listen, if your hard drive goes bad to the point where Plugging it in externally will not work. I mean, your hard drive goes bad. That's if, if your computer goes bad, we can rip out the hard drive and back it up. But if your computer or if your hard drive goes bad, it's going to cost you two thousand dollars to go to a professional, praying that they can get you the data off that hard drive. Yeah. So back up your stuff. And backing up your stuff doesn't mean put it somewhere on a CD or a flash drive. Like back it up on a nice external or whatever we recommend here in just a little bit, but just just back it up. Just back it up in some up. form or fashion. Do something. If Once you don't gone. know how to back up, um, I'm going to be doing a video shortly within the next couple weeks about uh, options of how to back up specifically on your computer, uh, whether it be a PC, Mac, or Linux, or whatever. Right. There are several options on all platforms. Yeah. Um, now the first thing I want to talk about is disks. Disk backup is going to give you the longevity. Um, so if you have data that you're going to need 10, 20, 30 years from now, this is the kind of thing you want to go with. Um, DVDs, for most, in most cases, have a 30 to 100 year advertised lifespan. So 30 is, I think, understandable. Um, if you're planning on living another 100 years, kudos, and uh, this is the way to go. Uh, Blu-ray is going to give you a higher capacity. Uh, DVDs, you're, you're going to be stuck at four gigs or eight gigs if you get the larger capacity. Right. Um, you know, it's 4.7 and 8.5 or whatever. But the, but but the point is that's you're not going to get that full space anyway. So let's just call it four gigs and eight gigs. Right. Um, and you know, eight gigs is not terrible uh, if you have a set of you know, let's say vacation pictures or things like that. Um, you know, you can definitely get that that kind of thing onto a disc. Uh, however, the drawback here is you've got to make sure this doesn't get scratched, you've got to make sure this stays in the proper temperature uh, because what will happen a lot of times is this top layer, which most people just think is a label, is actually the metal film that the data is written on from underneath. The plastic underneath is just basically a protection layer for the actual data layer. Right? If this gets scratched or if this starts flaking off like it did for him, yep. um, it, 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 that's it. That's it. It's the end of the game. So you have to make sure that your discs are in proper climate control conditions. No, no extreme highs or lows. And you know, realistically, I would say don't count on anything more than ten years. Yeah. Um, anything that you know you're going to be handling because a you can't guarantee anything because even in a climate controlled storage unit, you don't pay their bills. So you know if, if the electricity goes out, anything, anything. Around here, if it rains hard, power goes out oh, for yeah. six miles. Yeah. So, you know, and we have a, a climate. Snow. Yeah, we have a climate control facility down the street, and that street that it's on has lost power three times in the last two years that I know of. So, it's one of those things that if you can't 100% control it, um, you know, try to find different options. Um, something I want to get out of the way is flash drives. Uh, this is just a couple different options I've got that that I have. I want to stress that flash drives are not a backup solution. No. These are not meant to store data long term. They are meant to die. They are literally meant to die. They're meant to be used and abused and six months to a year be replaced. I'm running a couple flash drives that are super old because I've literally written data to them two to three times. 
and I'm literally just copying things off of them. Right. Um, Flash memory is more based around how much data you write to it. Right. Um, so if you format a, a flash drive, if you format a solid state drive many times, it's gonna fry it out. We've had a friend, friend of ours lost the computer because somebody was trying to set up a custom configuration with dual boot and they fried out the, the solid state because they just formatted it too many times. And it, it was useless, it was a brick basically. Yeah. So these are meant for temporary storage. Don't work on these. So if you're writing papers for school especially, don't work off of these. Copy from your flash drive to your computer and then back on if need be. Yeah. Don't work off these because if you're, you know, you're working on a Word document, if you're working on your, let's say your thesis, you know, which if you're working on your thesis, you should know by now. But let's say you don't. If you're working on something that's very long, very lengthy, and you're constantly writing to it, you gotta think. If you're, if you're writing a book, let's say, 10,000 pages, you're writing that over time, you know, I'm, I'm presuming you're writing the next Lord of the Rings. 10, right, right, pages. right, right, right. <laughs> um, but you know, you're writing multiple hundreds of pages over time, that you're writing that data every single time. Every new word that you put in and every time it auto saves, it's writing to this device. Right. So you gotta keep that in mind, is these are not meant to be works from, these are not meant to be long-term storage take them off of this and you put them on something more sturdy, something that's designed to store data for a long time. I mean, they're lit literally, the short end of it is they're literally made to be able to quickly take something from one system to another. So if you do have a project that you've saved on your computer or an external hard drive and you finished it and you need to take it to school to print it out or something, that's what that's for. That's not for storage. Those are two different things. One's for just transferring real quick the other one's actual storage and you don't use those for storage so make sure you keep that in mind because I think a lot of people believe because they're coming out with 128 gig right uh, you know I mean we have 128 gig that's true yeah drives. yeah we, we uh, each have 128 flash we drives we have those flash drives because we just have a lot of data on them that we just use it's not it's not stuff that we can continuously add to it it's just something we added at once and now we just literally use what's on that and it's one of those so things that if that crashes that's not the only copy yeah, of that that's data not the only copy. you know it's it's basically tools and stuff that, that that I've got a couple pictures things like that that are, that's not the only copy of them and that's not a backup copy of them I, that's something where I'm gonna take that with me I'm gonna use the files that are on there and then I'm gonna be done with it yeah, definitely. you know it's going back on the keychain What's the next one, man? The, the best option, uh, and I'm gonna talk about two things at the same time here, the best option is gonna be uh, your external hard drive. Now, this is a, a big raging beast from seven years ago. This is 250 gigs. It still works. Luckily. It still works. Luckily. It still works, luckily, yeah. It still, it still definitely works. It held, um, it held my Power Rangers collection for, for the longest right. time. I had a series of Power Rangers. I do here. wanna go off saying this right off the bat. Guys, all this stuff will go bad. Like it, it, it'll all hard go drive. bad. I had three of these, one went bad. The the actual drive itself went bad. Right. A lot of times on an external drive, what'll happen is that the, the conversion board will go bad. So this goes from an internal IDE, if you'll believe it, to, uh, to a USB. So that board that converts that IDE to USB will just fry out eventually. Uh, I've had several drives that, that happen to, and it, it will just happen. Uh, yeah. There's really no, Kind of time frame. I mean, I had one that I watched a series off of. I had one smaller one, you know, one of the, the smaller portable ones, and it fried out right after I finished watching the series. Like I watched a show from it. The next time after I was done watching the series, I, I opened it to just to browse the folders. It wouldn't access, and the drive itself had gone bad. So the the, the controller board had gone bad, and the board the board itself on the drive went bad. So that was a complete fail. And I might actually have to send that in at some point because I don't remember what was on it. I do want to say this too, uh, a lot of people ask, well, what's a good brand? Guys, a lot of brands are good brands. Just because you've heard somebody had a bad experience does not mean that's a bad brand. Mm -hmm. I've had a Seagate, I've had Seagates for a while. I still use Seagates, but I did have a Seagate go out on me and after hearing all the horror stories, I was thinking, well, maybe I should avoid Seagate. You know Same what, I've, I've, since then, I've owned, I still own Seagates. I actually use it right now for internal storage and they are still running great. They're over two years old and nothing's wrong with them. So there's no brand that's better than another. And Absolutely. to be honest, a lot of times the brands use 
parts from one manufacturer, like Samsung or something like that. So yeah. It's not like a lot of your off brands, a lot of your smaller yeah, brands, exactly. they come from literally the they same really factory. Do. You know, you, I, I I wouldn't doubt for a single second if my, my 120 and my uh, my A Data 120 or my A Data 512 that right. I'm using, they probably all came from the same factory, if not like nearby factories. Right. I um, mean, if you want us to recommend at least two Western Digital and Seagate, they're absolutely. probably the top dogs right now when it comes down to hard drives, at least mechanical hard drives. SSDs is a different story, we'll talk about that later, but that's not for storage either. SSDs are not storage, it's mechanical hard drives that we're talking about today. So. Um, yeah, as far yeah, as backup so. purposes, I mean, really, your, your two main options on the shelf are your Western Digital and your Seagate. Right. Um, they're, they're you've got really Toshiba kind of coming up in the in the external market, uh, and their drives are fantastic. Oh, yeah. A lot of your computers that you're buying on the shelf have Toshiba drives in them. Um, I have one. I and know. It's, um, it's running great. What is it? Uh, and Lenovo. So. Lenovo likes to use Toshiba drives. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I have a Toshiba drive, and a lot of these hard drives also, especially external ones, come built with software for backup. My Toshiba did, and yeah. I used it, and it's actually good software. Uh, if you've ever used a Mac and you use Time Machine, it's pretty similar to it. Now, I, I would probably say the Time Machine's a little better software when it comes down to it, but it's basically the same idea. Uh, it's just these companies, they realize that most of the time customers buy these external hard drives for this sake of backing up, so why not give you a software that can do it for you instead Absolutely. of you manually doing it. Yeah, I mean, um, five years ago it was much harder to do backups because you, for the most part, had to do it manually. Um, you know, unless you had uh, something that was akin to a time machine. I think five years ago was right around the time when that came out. Right. So, I mean, really, the, the automated backup process was just coming up. Right. Uh, Windows had some stuff built into like Vista and 7. Um, yeah, and that, keep that, getting prompted to set that up. Yeah, and, and it was one of those things that like you could set it up and then you had to run it, or if you scheduled it, it was kind of weird. Right. It was, you know, even in the best of conditions, it didn't work as good as you wanted it to. Right. Nowadays, like you were saying, it, most hard drives are coming with some sort of software solution. Uh, if they're not, your computer likely has a really good software solution. I know Dell's have, uh, the, the Dell backup is really good. I've used it. I think 8Data, I mean, I know they have hard drive swap cloning, but I think they even might have a backup as well. I yeah, I mean, the, the, oh, my 8Data oh. solid state came with a Cronus, and a Cronus, yeah. if, you, if you don't have a, a, a solution that came with your drive or your computer, um, a Cronus is one of my favorites. Yeah, um, it, it, it just, it'll basically just, Copy and paste with your entire drive onto an external. All right, so let's um, go. Let's go to the next part. You said this is kind of like a double. So this is this is the this is kind of the the, the other half of the external su support option. Um, if your computer dies in terms of let's say screen cracks and you're just not thinking it's going to be a repairable thing, and you a know how to get your drive out or know someone who can get your drive out, you can still access your data. Um, this is just one of many options. But this is a, um, this is actually a Toshiba drive. <laughs> right. Um, so yeah, no, Samsung. So this is a Samsung drive uh, that came out of a Dell, one of my old Dells. Um, and it's plugs into this SATA to USB converter. Straight in, uh, pretty straightforward. Pl powers off any USB. I really haven't had it not power off anything. Um, and you can access your data if you know a little bit about accessing the, the file structure. And it's pretty much just like accessing it if you were going to your C drive or whatever. Right. So for the most part, it's pretty much the same experience as you as would. As in the external. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You're um, just taking an internal and doing what is already done in an in, in, or external yeah. drive. And, and then that gives you an option to, I mean, this actually does come with a cover. I just leave it off of there because I swapped the drive that's in yeah. there. Uh, but you could then turn that into an external drive. I mean, this, this particular uh, case came with... Uh, with my uh, solid state, so when I swapped it, basically I took my Samsung drive out of this, not this Samsung, a different Samsung drive, out of uh, my Samsung computer, and um, I put in my 120, which now Red X has that computer. Uh, but yeah, I put the 128 data in there, and I took this out, so I didn't have to do any kind of data backup and then do a transfer. So I had all my drivers on here. I had all my pertinent data. So when I put in the 120, the 120 wasn't going to hold data. It was going to be literally just a production machine. So 
the data stayed on here until I pulled it off onto one of my backups. So that's that's kind of the biggest thing is, as I said, the main, main thing is to definitely just do it. There are many options. If you are gonna be hooking up something for kind of a permanent backup and setting it up with some sort of software where it's gonna do um, you know, weekly or whatever backup, I would go with a full-size powered hard drive. Yeah. Reason being, portable drives that are like this, this size, um, they're meant to spin down and not be on basically to preserve power because they're they're presuming that you're hooking it up to your laptop while on battery power. Right. Um, so at which point they don't want you, you know, if you're right. not actively accessing it, it just spins down and stops moving, uh, which can cause some trouble if you are trying to do a backup. Um, you have a lot of options in the full size to go to a network drive, uh, hook it up to your router, things like that. A lot of routers actually have a USB port, yeah. so even if you don't get one that's network enabled, you can use a regular one and now your router has, uh, I know my Netgear has a, what they call it, ReadyShare, yep. so you can just, you literally you get an app on your computer and you dump music or whatever you want or your backup into it and you're good to go. Um, so it's, it's it's fantastic, and you know with something like that you can share it on your network. So you can if you have two three computers, you can access all your stuff. So it's like a home home server. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and now the the one thing that's not here is the cloud option. Now the cloud option is by far my favorite. Yeah. Main reason being, even with the best hard drives, a you're gonna have a lifespan that you're gonna have to keep track of. So. My personal experience is, and my recommendation, if you're going to use an active backup system where you're backing up more than two times a week and, you know, you're, you're doing a lot of data especially, I would replace an external hard drive every three to five years. Uh, closer to three if you're doing a lot of data, um, kind of the, the more you do with something, the faster it will fail. Um, that's kind of been my experience. Now, I'll be honest with you. These drives could last up to 10 years. My my mom's ultra build that we did a, a few weeks ago, it's running an IDE drive from yeah, I think 02 or 03. Yeah, it is an old drive. Like it, you know, by all rights it shouldn't be running, but it is. Yeah. Um, but she doesn't do much with it. That's the thing. She gets online, checks her email, and that's about it. And I, I don't even remember what computer that came out of, yeah. but it, I mean, it, mu it must have been a low usage computer because I've, I've had brand new drives, of two, not even two years old, completely die out. Yeah. So it, it's really a matter of how you use it and what you do with Absolutely. it. Um, but at the end of the day, you have to be the one doing that. With the cloud solution, um, such as Carbonite or any one of the, the syncing solutions like uh, your OneDrive, your iCloud, your Google Drive, things like that, Somebody else has to do that. Right. The, to, to, to do a quick explanation of the cloud is this is a hard drive. The cloud is a hundred of these on a rack in a farm that's climate controlled somewhere in Texas or Arizona or somewhere where it's far away where people can't find it. And it's just 35 guys walking through that warehouse two to three times a week saying, oh, this drive has been running for X amount of hours. Swap with a brand new drive. And that's it. Somebody has, you know, 50 to 100 copies of your data in one place, and then if one drive fails, they replace it. Right. So if you do your backup personally, if this drive fails, you have to replace it. And you're hoping that this didn't fail at the same time your computer failed, and right. there's all these other things that could happen. Sometimes things just happen at the same time where your external will fail, your computer stops working, and then you just don't know what's going on or where your data is. That's why I like the cloud solution. We uh, we backed up my fiance's music to we, we use Carbonite, mm -hmm. and it's fantastic. It, it copied all our stuff. It even tells you when like things didn't copy correctly. Right. Um, so it says, hey, you know, you, you've got 13 files that still haven't been done. So you know, we still got to do those files. So it's it's fantastic. Plus, if I think they've got some other plans where even if you've got external drives with data on them you can include your external drive. So it, it really depends on what you want. If you have small data sets, like 10, 15 gigs, um, SkyDrive comes with 15. I think Google Drive comes with 15. Um, you said SkyDrive, but you meant OneDrive. I meant OneDrive. I said it was SkyDrive for so long. Yeah. <laughs> um, it was LiveDrive first. Yeah, yeah I'm sure. <laughs> um, yeah, they cannot decide on marketing for that thing. <laughs> anyway, different video. Um, but yeah, no, it, 
you've got that, you've got those are free. I mean, the 15 gigs for free. Yeah, 15, so, I think Dropbox might be doing 50. Yeah, I think Dropbox just went crazy, so, and they, you know, because storage has come down and they're buying in bulk, so it doesn't cost them as much to run it. I mean, come on, you can get a two terabyte drive nowadays for 70 bucks. Yep. 60 if you're Black, Black Friday weekend shopping. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. So that's, I mean, listen, Drives don't cost a lot. There's no reason why they can give you more for free. Absolutely. And on top of that, if you decide to get even more to pay, I mean, it's ten, you're not paying a lot. Yeah, it's ten bucks yeah. a month, five bucks a month for some of the services. So I mean, really, there's dozens, if not hundreds, of options of what cloud services to go with. Now, I would caution. Oh my dog is exploring. Lie down. Lie down. But I do want to say this uh, while we're on the topic of clouds, um, which is final topic. But with cloud storage, listen, you're going to, you know, I hear all the time, oh, but what if I, you know, what if we get hacked or my data gets acquired because the company got hacked? Listen, if you get hacked or if you're personally getting hacked or somebody's after you to hack you, they can hack your computer. They don't need your cloud. They can hack your computer easy enough. If they can hack a cloud service, they can hack a computer. That's not a problem. The thing is, is there's so many things they have to do to do that. It's not like it's easy. You see a lot of these, you know, famous people saying, oh, you know, their uh, pictures got taken or whatever it is uh, because of the cloud or because it was, you know, on somehow on their phone or something like that. Yeah, but they're famous. They're they whoever they're famous. Did it they're was a because target. they were a target. It's not because and, and it's one of those things that just was able to access the cloud. So they even said a couple of them went out. You know, not even them rather, but the the people who were looking into it, right. or the companies that were dealing with it. They said nothing was actually broken on the cloud service itself. Right. They just figured out the password. Yeah, and that's something that you really can't fight against. You can have dozens, hundreds, thousands of levels of encry encryption, if somebody figures out that you use password one as your password, right? that's it. Yeah. They have full access. That's why they tell you to make your passwords as complicated as possible, but obviously you still want to make sure you remember what that complicated password is. Or use a password generator. Or use a password <laughs> generator, one or the other. Yeah. But you want to make your passwords difficult. Most of the time when people get hacked, it's because their passwords are way, way too easy and they're way easier to figure out. It's not because somebody made a, uh, an amazing program that was able to hack right. the system. It's really just because they figured out your password. Yeah, 90% of, of the time, 90% of the time is just, they just ran down the possibilities. Yeah, they, and so. it's one of those things that famous people in particular, because so much of their lives are public and you know, you know oh, their, their dog's name and you yeah. know their best friend's name, that's the kind of stuff people use in their passwords. Absolutely. And the best thing to do is to use words, phrases, combinations of words and phrases that you don't have in your personal life and that most people who even that know you wouldn't know. So because then even if, you know, if, I don't know if you're the subject of some sort of NSA investigation <laughs> <laughs> or some sort of super spy movie, <laughs> you know, when your friends are when your friends are pressed for information. They're like, I, I don't know, you know, the fuzzy is the cat, right. you know, you're trying fuzzy five and it's not working. <laughs> <laughs> but and, um, you know, that's why I, I always say, you know, if you have like TV series, you know, if you're, what, what I got on the shelf, if you're a fan of the boondocks and you know, you, you choose a, a, like a nondescript character or place from that, something that literally only you could possibly know, that's all it takes because then, you know what? No yeah. one knows it. It's not yeah. part of your life. You know, if it's something where, like, I'm a big fan of Family Guy, I should never use, like, Griffin or Peter right, or Stewie, because right, right. everyone knows I love Family Guy, right. you know, but, like, well, you know what, what all I've got up here, but if I choose a different show that, like, no one knows I've ever watched, that's a, that's a good choice for me, because then it's, you, you're literally just guessing, and that's when it becomes more complicated and more difficult. And also, the longer your password is, the better. Right. So, if you have, I had a, a teacher in high school for their password, they used literally a verse from Shakespeare, an entire verse. It was the longest password I'd ever seen. Yeah. And it was it works. Yeah. I and it's nobody, nobody would ever guess it. Absolutely. <laughs> a, the length, the complexity, spelling, yeah. you know, something like Shakespeare. 
Come on, there's just a lot of complexity levels that you can do with that. Bottom line is, the security aspect of cloud storage is it's not something to worry about at this right. point. Um, I, I would say go with a, a known name. So, you know, one of the ones we've described, Dro Dropbox has been around for ages. OneDrive is Microsoft. Google Drive is obviously Google. iCloud is Apple. Those people are around. They're going to stay around. They're not yeah. going anywhere. Yeah, absolutely. You know, Box is another one that I personally yeah. have used. Box is pretty good. Uh, Box works pretty well. Um, I did. We. We ended up using Mega Cloud for a while. Mega Cloud, yeah, but they just disappeared. Disappeared overnight. You know, it was one of those things where I tried it out. I was kind of hesitant, and then a few months in, they seemed like they were doing fine. They were their website so got updated everything and everything. Apps got updated, and I was like, all right, well, these guys are obviously making the right moves. So I went with them for a while, and you know, thankfully, I, I didn't rely. Yeah, you know, I didn't rely yeah. on it for it to have all my stuff, but. It was one of those things where one day I, I'm sitting there and it just keeps trying to sync up. And I'm like, why is this not syncing? And their website was just gone. So, you know, that's why I went back to using Google Drive and, you know, Dropbox and everything like that. And it's like, like you were saying, yeah. now they're giving you more for free. Yeah. So it's even easier now. And it's easier to use those services because with, with Mega Cloud, I was able to like rack up services right. by getting friends to sign I up. mean, <laughs> the thing is, it's safe to say is, like he said, if you go to Google, Microsoft, or Apple, those companies are going to be around. Yeah. I mean, one way or another, those yeah, companies Microsoft are going ain't going nowhere. So Microsoft ain't going I nowhere. Mean, every, every few years, the government's going to tell them, hey, and, Monopoly, and they're going to be like, Google we're going to move to well, Canada. And Google <laughs> might as well own Earth. So yeah, know. I mean, Google is pretty much the, the... They're just short of being Skynet. Right. So, I mean, whatever. But uh, enough of the tangents. I mean, basically, I think our final thoughts, uh, the best best thing for backups is the cloud service one because you don't have to worry about it two uh, one that didn't, we didn't bring up but you can access it anywhere yep. so if you have your username and a password you can literally access all your data anywhere you are uh, so that's definitely going to be the best route to go with external hard drives or even internal if you like to add hard drives internally instead yep. of externally uh, you can always go that route. Obviously, nowadays, I mean, I've seen 10 terabyte drives. It's pretty yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. if you ever shell out a few dollars, you can definitely get something yeah. that'll be a long, uh, not necessarily long lasting for you, but definitely well serving. Oh, yeah. Like me, I've got three external drives, and A, I compartmentalize a bit, but it was one of those things where I got a one terabyte, then I got a 1.5 terabyte, and then I got a three terabyte for the network drive. Right. So now I've just got like bits and pieces all over the place. Whereas nowadays, you can buy a three, four terabyte. Right hook it up and most people don't need more than three or four terabytes. And then of course your last bit is DVDs. You can do dual layer DVDs, Blu-ray DVDs. The only thing, just remember anytime you're going with bigger capacity DVDs, uh, they're going to write slower. So it's going to take some time to write to them. Blu-rays take a lot longer because their speeds are I think max at like four. Yeah, four, four X. Four X and so, the, which is a, a speed relative to the, the live the live speed. And then you got. Uh... <laughs> We're recording in here. Uh, but yeah, so the, you know, the the four X or eight X or whatever speeds uh, you see on discs are relative to the live speed of whatever you're recording. So let's say you're recording a, a song and it's five minutes long and you record it at twenty X. Right. You're recording it at one twentieth the speed of five minutes. Right, right. So and uh, you down. don't you don't you don't want to use CDs because they just don't have enough memory. So There's just yeah. Make sure you're using DVDs if you're going that route. But yeah, but that's, only us Linux has to use CDs right? anymore. But, uh, <laughs> I think I think that's about it. I don't know. That's if pretty much it. I mean, not not a whole whole lot else to say. Um, I'll, I'll talk about specific services, my opinions, and such like that yeah, shortly. Later in a, in a um, video. Yeah, in a different video. But uh, I I just wanted to clarify and kind of stress the need for backup um i've i've had issues with it I, I know you've had some problems like everyone who doesn't back up you know when you're thinking you're secure yeah. Yeah. something happens All where your data is is crucially just inaccessible and you're sitting there kind of thinking what now yeah. well if you have a backup you don't have to deal with that uh it's black friday slash cyber weekend everyone's got a deal on something yeah, Got a little bit of money that's you know that you can. Yeah, don't spend. don't go to Starbucks for a week. Buy an external hard drive. Yeah. You'll thank me. Right. So, yeah, that's about it. That's pretty much it. Cerebro. Full throttle. Signing off.
Remember to visit T3GTech.com. T3GTech, like and subscribe. See ya.